All right, so we are back with chapter four. Uh, Miss Frizzle and the kids are back in time. They're uh, getting drooled on by dinosaurs. They're surrounded by like dino bones. Vanity, thy name is Miss L. Like I have to stop and fix my hair in this video. Good grief. Chapter four. Look down class, Miss Frizzle said, highlighting us high over the jungle. You can see what the world looked like 220 million years ago. Reminds me of my trip to Hawaii, Phoebe said. You're right, Phoebe, the Frizz said. Parts of the world in the Triassic period were like the tropical jungle like Hawaii, but other parts were like deserts. So deserts, very hot, very dry, uh, and rainforests, very humid, so they feel much wetter. Like, you know when there's a really hot, humid day and you step outside and you just automatically start dripping with sweat? That's a rainforest. But when it's really dry heat, you don't feel sweaty, you just feel dry. So desert, rainforest. Are we flying over Hawaii right now, Carlos asked. No, we're flying over Pangaea, the Frizz answered. The whole world was one giant continent in Triassic times. Today, we call it Pangaea. From the desk of Miss Frizzle, Pangaea supercontinent. 220 million years ago, the land on Earth was one big supercontinent called Pangaea. It had rainy jungles, inland deserts, and warm temperatures. Later, Pangaea separated into the seven continents we have now. You can see there's a picture of Pangaea. And if you look at the globe or at a map of the world, you can see how if the continents, you kind of smushed them together. They'd all fit together like wonky little puzzle pieces. And that's because back in the day, they were. And what happened is the world's on tectonic plates, so earthquakes would happen and they would shake things up and the plates would start to pull apart. And then the continents were formed like magic. We flew on until the landscape below us changed and went from the green jungle to a dry desert with only a few plants growing out of the reddish brown earth. Below us, I spied some strange animals running down a dry riverbed. Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle, I yelled, look down there. The Frizz and everyone else on board looked down out of the windows. They spotted the pack of yellow and green striped dinosaurs below us. They look like giant lizards, Tim said. At the sound of lizards, Liz poked her head out of Ms. Frizzle's school bag. So uh, Liz is their pet lizard. In case you don't remember or aren't familiar with the Frizzle universe. Giant scary lizards, Wanda added. Let's go down for a closer look, the Frizz said, bringing the helicopter down for a landing. Are you sure this is a good idea, Phoebe asked. Don't worry, Phoebe, the Frizz said. The Calyphysis is a meat eater, but it only eats small animals. Dinosaur data file. Calyphysis was a fast moving, thin meat eater. It stood 22 inches high and weighed 40 pounds. These animals hunted in packs. Fun fact, the remains of a baby Calyphysis have been found in the stomach of an adult Calyphysis skeleton. Sometimes it eats really small animals, Dorothy Ann added, looking at her field guide. The Calyphysis even eats its own young when it's hungry enough. Gross, Keisha said. Cool, Carlos added. I want to see these guys in person, Carlos said. Let's go. Carlos led us out of the helicopter and down into the riverbed. We could see the tracks of the Calyphysis in the damp ground. Someday, Ms. Frizzle pointed out, those tracks will become fossils, and scientists will use them to learn about the Calyphysis. Ms. Frizzle, Dorothy Ann called out, watch out for Liz. I think she's trying to get out of your bag. But Dorothy Ann's warning came too late. Just as the Frizz turned her head to look into her bag, Liz jumped out. She scampered away down the riverbank, right in the direction that the Calyphysis had taken. Oh no, Wanda said. Why is Liz running away? I have a feeling she's gone off to meet her ancient cousins, Ms. Frizzle said. What if she gets lost in Triassic times forever, Wanda asked. There's no time to find out, Ms. Frizzle shouted. We all took off running down the riverbed after Liz. Everyone was looking for our favorite green lizard. Wait a minute, I said. Isn't that Liz over there? I pointed to a pile of rocks near a bend in the river. From the desk of Ms. Frizzle, terrible lizards. The word dinosaur means fearfully great lizard. Dinosaurs were prehistoric reptiles. Like reptiles of today, dinosaurs had backbones and scaly skin and laid eggs. Today's reptiles have sprawled out legs. Dinosaurs had straight legs. Today's reptiles are all cold-blooded. Some dinosaurs may have been warm-blooded. You can see there's a picture of Liz, there's a dinosaur. They're related. 
Ralphie, Ms. Frizz whispered. You're right. See if you can sneak up on her and grab her. I started to protest. I wasn't sure I could make a sneak attack on Liz, but I knew the Frizz was counting on me. I headed off for the rock pile. Liz was sitting perfectly still, warming herself in the sun. I tiptoed up behind her. But just as I reached out to grab her, she made a flying leap and disappeared around the bed in the bend in the riverbed. I jumped after her. But it wasn't Liz I saw around the bend. Oh no! I was looking into the beady yellow eyes of the Calypisus. I was so scared that I couldn't move. The dinosaur was little. Poor a dinosaur. It came to the middle of my chest and it was skinny. But I didn't like the look in its eyes. Miss Frizzle, I yelled, help! Luckily for me, Liz came to the rescue. She came running and ran right over the dinosaur's spiky feet. It shifted its eyes to Liz. And there you can see Ralphie and the dino. And Ralphie's like, what are you looking at? Then it opened its mouth and showed two rows of spiky teeth. Liz, I screamed, watch out! The dinosaur darted its mouth down to gobble up Liz. Just in time, Liz made a flying leap off the ground. There was only one problem. She landed on my shoulder. I had heard that dinosaurs had small brains, and I was hoping this one was on the stupid side. But I was wrong. The dino jerked its head up to find Liz. Its little yellow eyes lit up with excitement. Food! Just then I felt two hands grab hold of me. It was the frizz to the rescue. She pulled me and Liz away from the Calypisus. Go away, the frizz said to the dinosaur, flapping her hands. Shoo! The little dinosaur stopped for a minute and looked hard at the frizz's red hair. Then it made a weird screeching noise. The frizz tucked Liz into her bag and zipped it shut. Then she took my hand and started to run. Back to the bus copter class, she yelled, before that guy's friends come. We all took off running back to the magic school helicopter. I glanced back behind us. That was a mistake. I saw the pack of Calypisus coming after us. Their legs were speeding along the ground, and their mouths were open, showing jaws full of sharp teeth. I suddenly became as fast as an Olympic athlete. I was the first one in the helicopter. Everybody piled in after me. The frizz was last on board. She pulled the hatch closed just as the lead Calypisus reached out. It lifted one clawed hand and left a long scratch on the hatch right next to the window. The frizz lost no time taking off. Below us, we saw the pack of Calypisus circling the spot where we had been. I think we've seen enough of the Triassic period, I said, wiping the sweat from my forehead. Me too, the frizzle agreed. Carlos, get out my laptop. It's time to travel forward in time. We have to track down the owner of that tooth. We're headed for the Jurassic period. What are Jurassic dinosaurs like? Wanda asked. Bigger, Dorothy Ann answered. Much bigger. So the next time, in chapter five, we'll be checking out this Jurassic period. Hope you're excited.